something I get asked by you guys quite a lot is if it's possible to create text along a curved path in Procreate. So some situations you might want to do this is in a logo design, something like this, where the path is on a circle, or perhaps you have a ribbon style design in your lettering and you want the text to move along the ribbon and curve with it. Other software like Photoshop and Illustrator on the desktop, they allow you to type directly onto a path. So you could create a circle and then type on that path and the text would follow the path around. And that path could be curvy or wavy or whatever you want. Procreate doesn't have that setting, so we have to get a little more creative. It's a bit more of a manual process, but it can be done. So we're gonna create this today and I'll take you through right from scratch. Basically, all we have in our file so far is the iPad calligraphy middle motif logo. And so we're going to create that circle text around the top and the bottom, and I'll show you exactly how you can do this. You can also do it with lettering if you like. Today I'm gonna to be using text. You can also use this particular method with lettering. So you could draw your lettering out on a straight line and then follow these steps to curve it. Or you could just simply letter on a curve, whatever you feel more comfortable with. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got a new layer here. I'm just going to stamp a circle shape. So this is from my shapes and ornaments set and I've just got a bunch of shape outlines that make it really easy to create these shapes. Or you could also use Procreate's Shape Snap. So if we get just a normal brush here, I'll just use a monoline and create a new layer. Basically, all you need to do is draw a circle and then hold two fingers on the canvas and you'll see Procreate snaps into a circle shape and you can size that shape before you, you come out of it. And then you have the shape here, which you can just position and still adjust even further if you want to just make that a bit smaller. So I'm going to make sure that the edges of my circle touch the edge of this design. That's pretty good. If you want to make sure that you're finding the center of the canvas, a good little trick is to tr turn on your drawing guide, which is under the canvas settings in the actions panel. And I've already set mine up, but if you go into edit drawing guide, you will probably see something like this with lots of different grids. But if you turn that right up to the highest grid size, not sure if you're getting that, it's very faint, but there's a blue line in both the horizontal and vertical axis, which gives us the very middle point. So now I have something that I can align to. So I can see the middle point here and I can just align my circle. So I know that's in the very middle. So now I have one circle, I'm gonna duplicate that and just do the same, but I'll just bring it in, align it to the middle. This area should be about the height of the letters because this is gonna be our guide for both the top and bottom angle. So it should be around about the size of the letters that you're going to use. Excellent, so now we have our guide ready to go. I'm just gonna put that in a group so that it's nice and tidy and just turn the opacity down, tapping on the little N and turn the opacity down. Next, we're going to type the text that we're going to use. So to do that, we just go into our actions panel and then under the add menu, there's add text. I'm going to type all in caps. If you just double tap it, it will then stay on. So this, is, this top line is calligraphy supplies. Great, and now we can edit the style, make sure that your text is all on one line. And we're also gonna just adjust that size slightly so that it sits very snugly inside that circle. So I'm looking at this H here and just seeing that it fits right between those guides and that's about what we want. And we just wanna make sure it's centered in the middle as well. So if I hop out of there and then just go back onto my select tool, I get these little nodes right in the center so I can make sure that that's directly in the middle of the canvas. What we're gonna do now is then wrap around these words. So we're going to shift each individual letter. So if you make sure that your text is aligned in the center right here, you know that any text that you bring around, it's all going to be centered and nice. So something to watch out for as well is just that the space between the letters, which is called kerning. Because as we start to wrap these texts around, you really want to make sure that you're keeping that consistency. Because we're doing it manually, just get a feeling for how much is between the letters so that you're not messing up the kerning too much. And also, just another note, we want to use a block style of text. So a sans serif or a serif would be great, but just something that's not like a script that's joined. A script that's separate is fine, but if it's joined together, we are going to be breaking the join by pulling the text around the path so you don't want a script there. Okay so we have our text ready to go. I'm now going to duplicate that because I'm also going to do the bottom while we're here. So in order to duplicate you just swipe to the left and choose duplicate and then I'm going to move that down the bottom and 
that's pretty much in the center and now I'm going to edit text you can do that just tap on the layer and choose edit text and then select part of the word and you can choose select all and now if you get into your style tab and you can't see your keyboard there's just a little icon in the top left that you press and that'll bring up your keyboard this line says for digital scribes So great, we have our top and bottom text. And if you're curious, the font I'm using is called Montserrat. Okay, I hope I said that right. <laughs> right, so we're gonna start with our top. Now what I'm gonna do is just take a duplication of these layers. I like to do that before I make anything destructive. So at the moment, the text is editable, but we're about to rasterize it. So before I do that, I'm gonna group it and I'm going to take a duplication of that group and I'm gonna turn off my backup layer because now I'm going to actually tap on the text and choose rasterize on both of those layers. That means we can no longer edit the text. If I'd noticed down the track that there was a spelling mistake or something like that, I could always come back into that edited layer and we wouldn't be too far behind. So I'm gonna start with the top layer here and you just need two tools to make this happen. Basically your move tool, which is the arrow and your select tool, which is this like S looking icon right next to it. What I find easier is to just move the letters out of the way. So we'll leave the P there, but everything else, I'm just gonna shift up. And you just do that by drawing your selection right around the area that you wanna move and then moving it. I just wanna get that out of the way so that we're not getting anything crossing over. Right, so I'll zoom in so you can see we're just drawing around this P and moving onto the arrow tool. And then you'll see when you get it onto the arrow tool, you get this little green node and that's gonna allow you to rotate that letter in and, the, and its angle. And this at the beginning won't be much of a move at all because we're still at a very straightening part of the curve. So it's just a slight amount that that one will need uh, rotating and it will progress, it'll get more as we move along. But when you're rotating, just look at the space between the top border and the bottom border, try and align that so that the letter is in the middle and also align it so that any straight points are lining up with the bottom of your letter, just to give you a guide. So those circles are basically just giving us a guide as to the angle. And then another thing to keep in mind as well is the space between the letters. So try and keep that consistent and it looks like the kerning is all lining up and consistent. So just try and keep the, the space between the letters as consistent as you can. Okay, now we have our left side done. So we've got the calligraphy wrapping around. And then when you are finished, you can just have a closer look and see if there's any letters that are maybe a bit low. This should all be lining up nicely. So watch that. The, these L's are kind of coming down a little bit low. So I'm gonna move those up ever so slightly just to make them a little bit more centered in the middle of the circles. But otherwise, everything else is looking good. So I'm gonna move on to the right-hand side now. Okay, and there we have it. We've got the top of our text wrapping around nicely, so that's looking really good. So I'm going to move on to the bottom, and it's much the same thing, but you notice we have three different words here. So we're just gonna be careful to make sure that those words are spaced out so that they look like separate words, because I'm gonna to have to move some of these uh, letters out of the way just so we can get a good shot of that bottom area. So I'm gonna start just by moving this four as a whole just out of the way and then we can get a little bit more room. So I'll carry on here. Okay, that looks good. So we've got four digital coming in nicely and I'll just finish off with this last word here, scribes. There you have it. And once you've got everything in place, you can just take an overall look and just make sure your spacing's right between the words. So I can see I've got a bit more space between this four and digital as compared to these last two. So I'm just gonna move the whole word just over slightly. And you can even rotate the whole word slightly as well. As long as your angle is pretty right already, then it shouldn't put things out too much to rotate three or more letters at a time like that. And there you have it. So I'm gonna turn off my circle guides now. I'll also just turn off my drawing guide there. 
that's worked really well. I hope today's tutorial has been helpful for you and this has cleared up how you can align text to a curve. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe and I shall see you next time.